Uh, today we're doing something that has been long requested, and that is a walkthrough or open house of our Airstream. We're going to focus on the interior because uh, we've talked about the exterior previously, and uh, as I've said, if you've seen the exterior of one Airstream, you've seen a lot of them. Maybe you haven't seen them all, but you've seen a lot of them. So I'm going to flip the camera around, and uh, we're going to go right to live our Airstream. So this is our campground here right outside Bryce Canyon National Park. And there she is, our Airstream, which is a 2003 25 foot long classic. And um, she's held up pretty well over the years. A little bit dirty these days because we've been traveling around in Southern Utah. And uh, I guess we've been on a few rough roads, a few dirt roads. But uh, overall, she's looking great and uh, has really given us about a decade of great service. And one thing I wanted to show you is uh, inside our front door, we have a sticker door, sticker wall, whatever you want to call it. And we've really done kind of a poor job over the years collecting these stickers because we've been to 49 states and we certainly don't have 49 stickers on our little door but we're working on it and we're gonna catch up and we're gonna get some stickers for some of the places we've missed. Uh, some new additions, we have Arches National Park, Canyon Lands, and uh, Capitol Reef here in Utah. Utah has been absolutely fantastic. And there's a sticker for Vinny's North Bay Airstream Repair. Vinny is a big reason that our Airstream looks as good as it does. Our little screen door, screen door is great. Uh, because it keeps the insects out and lets the cool air in. And there's my <laughs> lovely wife Hello. hanging out in the galley area. Our Airstream is a rear bedroom model. So the uh, door comes in right next, uh, right next to the kitchen and right next to the living area. So the front of our Airstream is the living area where we have... Uh, a couch. It's not a wraparound couch, but it is a nice, comfortable couch, and it does convert into kind of a futon-style arrangement. So, you know, you can you can certainly sleep on the front couch quite comfortably if you wanted to. And we have a couple of flip-out tables. This is a table on Christie's side, and you can see that she's decoupage a lot of vintage National Park postcards. But uh, anyway, this is the, the main living area, and you can see... Uh, There's a couch there. We've got an ottoman. And that's actually good for storage, too. And it makes it nice because I can kick out my legs when I'm sitting on that side. And then over here, we've got the table. We've got it folded out twice because that way Sean can set up his computer and edit there pretty easily. And um, it gives him a little more leg room over to the... His, well, his right, our left. Yeah, I really do like this fold-out table arrangement because it makes for a big, nice uh, working area and also for dining. I mean, you got plenty of, of space for plates or dishes and what have you. And again, when I'm working, a lot of times I'll have laptop out here, different camera gear and so forth, and it's just a nice workable space. Again, anytime you're dealing with an RV uh, and certainly an Airstream, you got to make the most of a very compact area, a very compact space. And I think uh, our floor plan flows really well to me. I mean, we wouldn't have kept this thing for 10 years if it hadn't. Yeah. It, it works great. Yeah. So you can see you just come in right there. There's the door. It's my side of the couch that I usually sit on. Sean sits there. And then there's a nice big window there. We've got a TV that folds out from there, and that's also sort of our little charging station. We've got a speaker over there. Yeah, it's a bit of a mess over there right now, a bit of a rat's nest, because we have a cellular booster that we're going to be installing and reviewing soon that boosts weak cellular signals. And I've also got a Bluetooth speaker over there so we can pipe music uh, through Bluetooth and you know play it obviously anywhere here in the Airstream, but also if we want to take it out to our picnic table or whatever, we can take it outside. There's a lot of storage here that you don't see. <laughs> Frankly, there's storage behind the couch. There's some beneath the couch. There's storage under the arms of the sofa. Those arms pop out, and there's pretty deep storage there, so that's really nice. And then, of course, these overhead compartments have storage as well. 
And there might be some coffee <laughs> yeah. storage up there on the top. This is the special coffee storage arrangement. You guys hey. feel free to shout out and let us know where you're tuning in from and if you have any questions too. If you're an Airstream or you know, when you when you have an Airstream, you store things pretty much anywhere you can. I mean, especially if you ever do any full timing in your RV. So, top of the shelf, it, it works. That's all I can say. It'll I want to say hi to Mary Hamilton. I'm glad you tuned in and uh, we have been keeping you in our thoughts and prayers. That's um, right. Okay, you want to continue the yeah. tour a little bit? Uh, one other thing to point out here, uh, Christy has a storage uh, ottoman here. And this is another kind of little RV hack that you can do. You know, recently we did a video about RV hacks and we probably should have included this. So I may do an, an additional video, but again, Hi Morgan. <laughs> I can't overemphasize the importance of storage space. So you got a little extra storage space if you put an ottoman or something like that in your RV. Um, over next to the door, I might point out, this is a speaker, so we can actually pipe music, and it, it'll play throughout the Airstream. That's kind of a nice feature. And uh, we've got a little magnet wall here of different places we visited. And this is a backup camera that I very rarely use to back up our uh, Airstream, I mean our truck and hitch up our Airstream. But I'm using it more these days as a hook. I always keep a headlamp hanging by the door because it seems like every night we've got to go outside and do something in the dark. So it's great to have a headlamp where you can grab it. Um, this is a little flip out table that gives us, again, more countertop space. You know, a wise use of space because it folds right back flush against the side of the cabinetry. We also have a magazine rack and uh, at, the, at the moment we've got just an iPad and that sort of thing in there because uh, we don't subscribe to many magazines while we're traveling around the country. <laughs> um, Grace wants to know if we have ever been to golf camp, and she's going this winter. We have been to, it used to be called Camping on the Golf. I think it's Camp Golf. And now it's Camp Golf. And um, Golf Camp, Camp Golf. <laughs> that was one of our <laughs> Whatever very, they call it. That was one of our very first trips in our Airstream. We we got a golf front site and it was really nice. So you'll enjoy that, Grace. Yeah, I'll tell you a funny story about camping on the golf is, you know, we went there probably in 2007, camped right on the water, beach front, right on the sand. And at that time we had carpet in our Airstream. Well, about five years later, we ripped out all that carpet and installed this nice hardwood floor at Vinny's North Bay Airstream Repair. And we found a lot of that sand under our carpet. Because <laughs> like when you camp on the sand, you just can't help it. There's going to be all sorts of sand getting inside your Airstream. If you have carpet, you're going to have sand underneath your carpet. But there's not much you can do about that. Yeah. So um, here's our kitchen. It's pretty compact. You want to talk? Sure. Um, this is just our little spice rack. You know, keep what I can there. Some bug spray, some hand sanitizer. I don't know if that's good for being in my cooking space or not, but it's handy. <laughs> so we do have a um, three burner cooktop and an oven, a traditional gas oven. We do not have the convection microwave that some people have. Um, and then we have the double sink. I keep one side of the sink closed because if I didn't, I would have no counter space. <laughs> so this is really my counter space, unless I'm doing a lot of dishes. That's the only time I open up both sides, just because I wouldn't have room to prep food, really. So kitchen, of course, storage up here. Um, storage below the sink. I mean, we've got a bunch yeah, of storage here. Bunch of junk in there. And then this is our slide-out pantry, which I love. I love that it's wood. It's not wire baskets, so nothing falls through. I think this is wonderful, and I think it's a shame that Airstream doesn't make them of a solid material anymore. Most of the newer ones I see are the wire basket, and I hate those because things can fall through, and you can't see more things that way. But um, I really prefer this. You can stuff a lot of stuff in there. And then back this way is just our microwave, which needs to be wiped off, and our fridge. But this is actually real, a real wood panel that's over the fridge. It came like this, and this is real wood. So um, I didn't paint over the real wood when we did our, you know, big um, redesign last year. I did paint over the hideous fake wood walls. 
So this is just paint over those fake wood walls and it's held up. So I'm actually pretty impressed with that. And then this is painted over just the wallpaper that was here. So I just painted right over the wallpaper. So I think it's worked pretty well and it, you know, it hasn't really scratched or stained or anything. So I've been pretty pleased with it here. Hooks. Got There's some like hooks. some of the hooks that uh, Christy found. Again, uh, if you saw our RV hacks video, we believe that hooks are really an important addition you can make to any RV to give you a little additional storage. Yeah. So here's the bathroom and we have a bathroom that is all one, one room, I guess you could say. But to the right, you know, we've got some hanging yeah, towels. The toilet. We've got the, um, the mirror, which has a lot of storage behind it. I don't know if you can. Yeah. I mean, you can pack a lot of stuff behind that yeah. mirror, and we do. Um, cabinets there, cabinets here underneath. So our bathroom really has a lot of storage. I'm happy about that. And I like that it's all one room. I don't like showers that open to the hall, personally. So um, I do like this. Our shower is really deep. Like once you get in there, it's a little awkward getting in, but once you're in, it's pretty big and it's got a huge seat, which I really like. Um, Show them how the shower closes because it's kind of unusual. Yeah, so this is just like a little roll up door. It works great. It though. works great and, um, you know, lets some light through, but you can't, if somebody's in there and you had this door open, you couldn't see anything besides just an outline. So it's not it's as opaque. Yeah. It's totally opaque. So, as far as that goes. So, we really enjoy that. I like this bathroom design. We're getting a few little puck lights back here. Yeah, we've got some under counter lights there for late night bathroom visits. That's right. <laughs> so you don't have to turn on the overhead bright light. I'll show you another great hack, and that is the addition of a uh, shaving mirror into the shower. Yeah. I mean, that's something we did like 10 years ago. Yeah. And it's I, I really like it. <laughs> still going. Yeah. Somehow. Yeah. We are, we are missing a light cover up here. We hit a big bump at some point, and it flew off and it broke. Yeah, half. those things are hard to find. So we haven't found another one yet, but. And uh, those are LED lights. We switched most of our interior lights out to LED. So the door that goes to the bathroom is a sliding door. And we so got that's some nice. Yellowstone art uh, on the wall there. We're going to add a few more like sort of vintage national park pieces. I guess here. if this was a door that opened out, it would give us maybe more storage here for hooks and that sort of thing. But, you know, this works well. Yeah. And then, of course, back here is the bedroom area. <laughs> I might point out the master closet. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, we've got a master closet here uh, with, which holds a lot of stuff. I mean, it's a pretty good size, pretty good size closet. Yeah. And it's got the mirror on the front, which I like. It's nice to have a full length mirror. And I believe it's cedar lined, isn't it? It is cedar lined. Yeah, so that's nice, nice too. Um, as far as the bedroom goes, I feel like we have a lot of storage here because we've got these three overhead compartments. We've got the one hanging compartment. So that is actually more like closet space that right. you can hang things in like shirts. Can't hang anything long. Yeah. But, um, you know, it's nice. And then there's a nightstand on that side. That's actually my side of the bed. Yeah, Christy and, gets the nightstand. And I store shoes in this bottom compartment, which is really nice because it's kind of an awkward shape inside because of the water heater, I believe, that's back there behind it. So it's a little bit of an odd shape, but it holds my shoes just great. And my nightstand is very convenient. I've actually got a storage bin on my nightstand that really expands my storage there. And um, we do have a TV in here. I don't know if you can see that, but it Velcros back for storage and we can pull it out and tilt it. Yeah, I find us watching very little TV in the Airstream these days. Not that we ever did a whole lot anyway, but these yeah. days if you're going to watch video, you usually watch it on your phone or your laptop. Or your laptop, you know. So every now and then, if we're at a campground that has cable or that we have a good, you know, rabbit ear reception, we will watch something on TV. Yeah, it's nice to have anyway. Yeah. Oh, uh, Kevin Thomas asked what state we're in. We are in Utah, in yeah, southern Utah. We are actually just outside Bryce Canyon National Park. 
So we're here in Bryce Canyon City. We were in the park yesterday. We'll go back in the park in just a few minutes. We're gonna do a, a late afternoon hike. And we've really enjoyed Utah. It's a great state. The scenery here is just really phenomenal. People are nice. So we've really enjoyed our stay in Utah here, um, exploring all these national parks in the southern part of the state. And from here, we're going to Zion. So for anybody that's about to ask that question, <laughs> we'll be heading there tomorrow. Rosalina asked, did you guys go to Kodachrome? We did not go to Kodachrome, and we, we didn't go to Goblin Valley either. Yeah, we um, sort of drove past, but... We're just sort of, we're on a time crunch at this point. We're hitting the big five this yeah. time. So we definitely will be back to Southern Utah to spend more time in these parks. I think the time of year we're hitting them have, has been really perfect because we haven't had that extreme heat that a lot of people experience in arches and canyonlands. And, um, you know, so I would recommend it on that front if you come in the fall because it's been really pleasant here. But yeah, we'll definitely be back here probably next year and just coming to explore these parks even more. Carol Lee Kohler says, what year is your rig? 2003, and it's an yeah. Airstream Classic. You know, at this point, obviously it's 13 years old. It's been a lot of places and yeah. it's still holding <laughs> it up really put well. It has through the ringer. We have not babied this no. Airstream at all. They're, they're well made and we've had some really good help from Vinny to do some great maintenance on it. And, you know, it's it's been a good rig. So, yeah, can't say anything bad about it. We still love our Airstream. I mean, honestly, when I, I look around, I, of course, there are a lot of nice RVs on the road. There are a lot of nice other mm -hmm. Airstreams, but I still really love ours. I mean, it feels yeah. so comfortable to us now. Like, it, it's sort of, I think the 25-foot length is an ideal size for two people traveling around you yeah. know it's like uh it's just like a little tiny little condo on wheels you know <laughs> we can get into most national parks fairly easily i feel like if we were much bigger than this i feel like we would have a harder time just because sometimes we have a hard time with a 25 foot yeah so i think this is a good um length if you are planning on doing a lot of national parks because the national parks most of them were built you know 60 or 70 years ago and rigs were pretty tiny back then, so the campgrounds aren't really set up for these huge rigs. So, you know. Yeah, a lot of the national parks, uh, if you have a much bigger rig, you're going to have trouble getting a campsite. Mm -hmm. You know, even in, like in Yellowstone, for example, there are a couple places where we cannot yeah, uh, we get in. Canyon. We're too big for canyons, so, um, you know. It's, it is what it is. We, we miss out on, on some of those parks. And sometimes, depending on what park we're in, we don't always stay in the national park. If we've got a lot of work to do, um, if we need Wi-Fi, then we stay in a park, um, you know, that's in town so we can access Wi-Fi and do work from the road. So sometimes it's just not, you know, possible for us to stay inside the national park just because we need to be able to get some work done while we're on the road. So right. let's see. Ryan Lamica, you, you said your dad loves us both and talks about us all the time. Well, Ryan, we love your dad. He is a very special man to both of us. And um, you got some good genes there, man. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> You're very fortunate to have such a great dad. Whoops. Kevin Thomas says, how long have you had your Tilly hat? Is it showing anywhere? Actually, uh, I discovered Tilly hats about, I don't know, seven or eight years ago. I remember specifically where I was. I was in Maine at Acadia National Park, and we were just browsing in the, like, the park office or whatever, a campground store, yeah. and I found the hats, and, and I fell in love with, with these hats. I think they're fantastic hats, and so I've had uh, Tilly hats for uh, seven or eight years. But, you know, true story, we were in Morocco a couple of years ago, and my original Tilly hat got kind of uh, damaged. Uh, it got bent at the brim, and I contacted the company and told them about it, and they have a fantastic replacement policy. So that if you have a, a problem with your hat over time, you can contact them, and they've previously just replaced the hat flat out. Now, lately, I think maybe... Uh, maybe they're just cutting you a good deal on a new hat or replacement hat. But anyway, they seem to be a really great company, and so I love the hats. I may do a video about Tilly hats, actually, uh, on our YouTube channel, so be sure and tune in. 
Wow. Wade Lewis says he's watching from Barcelona. That's awesome. impressive, Wade. <laughs> yeah. um, we love Barcelona. We spent a good bit of time there um, two summers ago in 2014 and really enjoyed your city there. So um, maybe we'll see you in Barcelona sometime. Um, let's see. Somebody was asking Sean, what video editing software do you use? Chris, I am in the vast minority. I use Sony Vegas Pro <laughs> and uh, there's probably a handful of people using Sony Vegas, but I, I started using it 10 years ago and I've overall been happy with it. I mean, I think they're all do basically the same thing. So I think, uh, yeah, I'm happy with Sony Vegas right now, at least as happy as I can be. Um, um. Keith uh, asked, do you have enough room without a slide out? Well, I think this is, uh, I, we do have enough room. I mean, obviously we've gotten by for 10 years. Now, would a slide out be nice? Yeah, it'd probably be nice and it would add some more room. I think uh, it, when you are choosing an RV, you, there are always trade-offs. Mm -hmm. Everything, every advantage also has a disadvantage. I mean, I hear from yeah. people with slide outs and they talk about how the slide out brings dirt inside yeah, uh, their RV. Yeah, and they RV. leak and all these other they problems. They leak so. and like they come, you know, they, they have maintenance issues. So there are downsides to slide outs too, but there are upsides. It does give you more interior space. Yeah. One thing I've discovered over the years is uh, when we start traveling with our Airstream, and, you know, we get in it, it's that first week or so you transition to it. Yeah. And then it starts to feel like normal. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it's a strange thing that happens. Um, I don't know, in human psychology, like you sort of adjust to your environment and it becomes normal yeah. after a little while. So it feels normal to us. It's cozy, but <laughs> but normal. Yeah, and I think too, it depends on how well you pack it um, as far as how comfortable it is. If you had stuff just piled everywhere, then yeah, you would start to be like claustrophobic or something. <laughs> but um, we do a pretty good job of stuffing everything away. And so, you know, for the most part, it feels pretty open, even though it's a small space. So um, we got a couple other people tuning in. Carol from Tucson. Hi, Carol. Jim Poole from Northeast Arkansas. Joe Weldon says, love the snow video from Yellowstone. <laughs> We're going to be doing a uh, more snow video because we shot some great footage up there yeah. you know like when we're traveling around like this in our airstream it's a little harder for me to to focus and edit and get videos uploaded while we're on the road because uh, internet <laughs> connections are always reliable we're in a different place every couple of days but and you know that's something that um this winter we'll be we'll continue cranking out a lot of good videos on long long honeymoon yeah. if, if you hadn't subscribed to our youtube channel please do yeah because uh, we're getting a lot of traction there these days. There's a lot of cool stuff going on, and I think we're gonna we're gonna have a lot more cool stuff in 2017. Yeah. Hey, Matt Christopher Yay, says, "Sup, hey, you Matt. guys. Sup, Matt." <laughs> <laughs> Debbie is in Southern California, and it rained today. Well, that's good news. <laughs> <sighs> Tom is in Alberta. Hi, Tom. Rosalind says she loves your Patagonia vest. Thank you, Rosalind. Um, oh, Kevin says, "Have you had any mice problems during this day?" You know. We have not. We have not. And we're probably going to do a video about this, Fingers too. Crossed that we won't. Um, you know, the, the two things that I can think of were different. Because we took our Airstream back to exactly the same spot where we had the mice problems last yeah. year. So I was braced for another invasion. And we didn't see a single mouse. Mm -mm. Now, uh, we had some undercarriage damage fixed uh, at Vinny's North Bay Airstream Repair. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I don't know where the mi the mice were getting in last year, but that certainly could have been part of the problem. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing we did is we used Fresh Cab. We got a lot of suggestions on YouTube that we try this Fresh Cab stuff, which is basically... Uh, it, it's like balsam oil. Yeah, it smells like Christmas trees, mm -hmm. but for some reason uh, mice hate this odor, supposedly. Yeah. So we put some of those Fresh Cab packets all around our Airstream. Kind of underneath and cabinetry and that sort of stuff. And seems to have worked, is all I can say. So, but we also heard that there wasn't really the mice outbreak that there was um, the previous year. So. Yeah. Um, let's see. Cheryl asks, have you guys gone to Chaco Canyon? We have not. I don't know where Chaco Canyon, Canyon is, so fill us in. I'm Maybe assuming it's, it's somewhere probably, to put on the list. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this just in the past uh, three weeks, we've been to three or four different national parks. I think this is number four. Yeah, because we've been to Arches. Canyonlands, Capitol Reef, 
and now Bryce Canyon, mm-hmm. and we're going to Zion from here. Yeah. And I have a feeling we'll probably come through next year and start visiting all the state parks because we went to, uh, for example, Dead Horse Point State Park, mm-hmm. and it was spectacular. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was uh, some of the stuff in Utah, no offense to you Grand Canyon <laughs> lovers, but it's sort of like the Grand Canyon but better. I mean, yeah. honestly, some of the I scenery feel like is better. It's not as crowded. It's yeah. just bigger. There's more to explore. I feel like there's more um, hikes that you can do that aren't like 12 or 15 miles. You know, there are more like three or four miles that you can do and take your time and not worry about. You know, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, let's see. Karen says, we started with Bambi and moved to the International. Wish we could do more than weekend trips. Y'all live in the dream and joy. Well, thank you, Karen. And um, we love the Internationals. Those are super cool. So I know you enjoy that. Probably. Oh, okay. I'm sure our faces while buffering are very interesting. You get that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, those sort of, sort of faces, very attractive. Well, um, and Chris says, do Angel's Landing at Zion with video. Sounds good. We'll see. We'll check it out. Um, Angel's Landing is a pretty intense hike, so okay. we'll see if we're up for doing that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, Karen, we love you, too. Thanks for the happy travels. Jim Poole. Uh, yeah, Jim says he does almost exclusively state parks as opposed to national parks. Uh, state parks, like I said, in Utah, the ones we've seen have been spectacular, yeah. and they're probably, if anything, less crowded than the national parks. Yeah, and I think a lot of state parks have a lot more option as far as um, campsites. Like, we've been to a lot of state parks where they have full hookup and Wi-Fi and all kinds of things. So, I think we've done our little tour. Yeah. Any other questions for us before we sign off and head off on our hike? Yeah, I think uh, the sun is dipping down, and we're yeah. going to try and get out and see some hoodoos before the end of the day. The hoodoos yeah. are apparently these sort of columns that you see in Bryce Canyon, columns of rock. So uh, we're going to do a little bit of hiking. Um, Matt Christopher asks, how's the arch oil doing? Truthfully, uh, mm-hmm. it's hard to say because uh, so, so. the truck the truck sounds sort of terrible on a cold morning. <laughs> so I don't know. I mean, I guess I don't know how it would sound without the arch oil. I'm continuing to put the arch oil in religiously. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm probably going to do a video about our truck very soon, too, because I think 2017 may be the year that Seymour gets gets an upgrade in one way or another. And I don't know what form that's going to take. We may have the engine uh, upgraded, bulletproofed, yeah. so that some of these problems are Or if aren't anybody problem. has a contact at Ford that would like to talk to us about a new Ford truck, we'd yeah, love to hear from you. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> wouldn't mind a new, a new diesel. So. Uh, so Chris Shaver just joined. Hi, Chris. Um, let's yeah, Matt see. just had to replace four injectors. I, uh, think, I think that's probably what's going on with Seymour, to be yeah. honest. So. Uh, I'm let's see. For it. Louise says, have you ever been to the White Mountains of New Hampshire? We have been to New Hampshire, but I don't think we went to the White Mountains. No. We sort of went through the city part, really. Um, yeah, Joe video. wants a track video. I will definitely do more on our truck because I think that's an, to the track and tow vehicle is an issue a lot of us deal with. And especially if you have an, an older uh, diesel engine, <laughs> you know, there, there may be a few issues <laughs> as your engine ages. So... Sandra Smith wants to know, are larger rigs welcomed around there? We're here in Bryce Canyon right now. We're just outside the park in a private campground, and there are a lot of bigger rigs here. So there's definitely places that you can fit in if you're a larger rig. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, Yeah, this is a pretty nice campground, and it's right outside the the front entrance of the park. Matt asked, have you guys done Bryce yet? He didn't remember. No, this is actually our first time to hit some of these Utah National Parks. And I'm really... We're in Bryce right now, Matt. (laughs) I really feel it's been an incredible oversight on our part because these parks are absolutely incredible. They really are. I mean, some uh, of the best camping and hiking we've probably ever done in our yeah, 10 years. So. so I would definitely put it on your list. We've sort of skirted through and a lot of times we've been passing through Utah in the middle of summer, like July and August when it's so hot and we've just heard it's miserable at places like Arches because it's like 120 degrees. So this year we tried to make certain that we were going to be here when it was a little cooler so that we could spend some time here and really enjoy it rather than going out on hikes and dreading (laughs) dreading the 100 degree weather so it's been really perfect the month of october is pretty much when we've been here and it's been you know 75 and sunny during the day and then cooler at night sometimes down into the 30s but you know just depends so it's been really perfect weather 
Kevin says that Seymour needs about 600 horsepower. <laughs> that sounds pretty good to me. Seymour <laughs> needs some help. Bless his heart. I mean, he's doing his best. So. <laughs> All right. I think we're going to wrap up because yeah. we're going to hit the hiking trail. We just want to check in with you guys. Wish you a happy weekend. Hope you get out there and have some fun this weekend. Yeah. If you're watching this video on Facebook, give us a thumbs up. Let us know if you want us to do more of these kind of videos. If you're catching this at a later date, you can watch it back from the very beginning and see the whole tour of the Airstream. And then also, um, if you will go to our YouTube channel and subscribe, we will love you forever. <laughs> um, it really makes a difference for us um, to grow our subscriber numbers. It helps us, um, you know, just do more and, and be able to post more videos for you guys. So let us know what kind of videos you want to see, too, if you've got a special request. Perry asked, what's your favorite or most memorable Southeast journey? We'll, we'll make this kind of last question, I think. Oh, okay. uh, I would say Key West. Well, yeah, yeah. I that, mean, Key that's, West. that's kind of far for a weekend well, it's southeast. journey from, uh, okay. from Georgia. <laughs> no, it says Southeast journey. Okay, looking for a weekend from North Georgia. Okay. Yeah. But uh, a Southeast journey, Key West is awesome. So, yeah. I mean, fantastic. Yeah, the foot <laughs> is good. Yeah. He's at about 98%. So, he's almost 100%. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Until next time. Have a great weekend. Lolo ho. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you disliked it, give it a thumbs down. Feel free to leave a comment. And of course, don't forget to subscribe.